right, so we've taken our break. We've got our circuit set up. I, I see some of you gang over there getting the, all right, that's good. All right, so I've got a couple things sitting here, right? I asked you to hook up your power supply. I see you got your power supplies hooked up. You've got your power supply plus and minus coming off. That looks good. You've got your breadboard set up. We talked about that. We, we're now going to re-record this, so obviously you all clam back up on me. and not going to say much. We don't know what resistor we got here. I asked you just to grab a random resistor. We talked about color coser resistors a few moments ago. And now we're going to set off and make our measurements. Now, there's a few things to remember when we're dealing with resistance, volts, and amperage. There's a few things that we need to remember, and this is why we're going to do this collectively as a group. You've got your resistor plugged in. Well, we walked around, we made sure we had a complete circuit here. So what are some reminders that we need to know about circuitry? What did we say on uh, the other class that we needed to know about circuits? What was it that we needed to know? No, 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 not that. Not that. Before we talked about that, what was it that we were dealing with before? About just that flashlight example. What we need is a path, load, source. That's right. You have to have those three ingredients in order for any circuit to work. And then, as we said, we needed an indicator control. So, when I'm working on circuits, I understand this is Ohm's law at its finest. I know that it's a fine Ohm's law, and the problem that I have is that it's just a simple resistor. That simple resistor is the load in this case. That's the load. It is going to convert that electrical energy into thermal energy as it's prohibiting the flow of current. It could have been that flashlight light bulb that we talked about on the other day's class. So I've got a load. In this case, it's a resistor. You don't know what the value of that resistor is. We need to know it. No matter what happens in this world, Completely remember this. Burn this into the inside of your eyelids. Do not forget what you've got there. Path, load, source. All right, you've hooked your five volts up, turn your volts on, and now measure. Ah, I see what you, yeah, you got to wait for it now. I see. So you've turned on your power supplies, you've got your meter out, and now you don't know what to do. I kind of hung you out to dry on this one. Let's talk about multimeters. This is absolutely critical to know. Let's look at a multimeter. Multimeter. I believe that is Greek. Multimeter is Greek for many meters. <laughs> and this blows people away every time I get to this point. Multimeter. It's Greek for many meters. There's a big problem with multimeters. If I've got a meter here, there has got to be a setting. Volts, amps, and ohms. So the very first thing I do whenever I set my meter up is I got to set the multi-part to read what I need it to read. If I am dealing with voltage, I have to set the dial to voltage. Now there's a little side set to that. The next side set is, depending upon your brand, you're going to need to hit the ACDC button. That ACDC button best rock band in the planet as far as I'm concerned. I teach electronics, so naturally ACDC's got to be up there on my list. But you need to know what are you measuring. In this class, Electronics 102, DC Electronics, it's going to be DC. So you got DC set to that. Be careful with that. Push that button once or twice and see what happens to the display. Now that we've got that part, you've adjusted the meter to know you're measuring voltage. The next critical thing is I am going to measure using these in these probes. So the probes, there will be three contact points, maybe four, depending upon if there's a milliamp range and an amp range for the ammeter. Historically, almost exclusively, the far left-hand side of your meter will be your ammeter side. The center point is your common that typically will be the black wire, and then the far right-hand side usually is going to be the voltage and the resistance. So you always have two things to do. Set the dial to what you want and set the probes to what you want. And it never ceases to amaze me how you'll go out, measure voltage, and you'll have it set to current. Or you want to measure voltage and some knucklehead set it over the opposite way and everything goes downhill after that. I'm not getting anything. I think my fuse is blown. And that's because of this situation here. Now, the good news is this. The good news is when I measure voltage, I am measuring across. 
I am measuring across this resistor. So I need to measure across. And the beauty part is I am measuring across. There's lots of analogies of what people say voltages are. Voltage is the height of water behind a dam. Think of this, I'm standing off to the side and I'm watching this high column of water behind a dam. I'm out of its way, I am safely removed from it, I'm looking across it. I am pretty well safe and protected from that. I'm in good shape with that. So I can set this bad boy to voltage and I'm good to go there. I know, bear with me, bear with me, I know you want to get these meters rolling, you want to get on there measuring it, but just bear with me on this one. Voltage looks across, it's got to be set to V, and you got to have the dial set, you got to have the AC-DC and properly looking across it. Okay, turn on your power supplies, make sure your meters are set, and let's do that value right now. What value of voltage are you getting? Okay, you got 4.94 volts. Ah, that gets us to a problem. I see that your power supply actually reads on the display 5.0. So do me a quick favor. Take your multi-leads and just quickly touch those out, the uh, banana jacks of plus and minus on the power supply. Tell me what you get there. 4.94 as well. All right. So who's right? Is it the 5-volt display or is it the 4.94 volts? Yes, that's right. We're at another conundrum here where the answer is yes. You get pulled over by a police officer, right? Usually you hear this, excuse me, do you know how fast you were going? And I believe you have two distinct answers at this point that you can give. One is, yes sir, I do. And the other is, no, I really don't. Uh, how fast? No. So you can play the cards either way. The problem is in electronics, we have to be precise. Typically, our multimeter or benchtop meter is going to be the gospel that we have to follow for our measurements. So if my meter reads 4.94 volts, I am going to trust that that power supply itself is putting out 4.94 volts. The asterisk is, unless I know that that power supply has been calibrated and there's a calibrated button that takes trump over my multimeter, I'm going to trust my multimeter. And the reason for it is I can use that multimeter to read multiple results. And if I'm wrong, it will be wrong consistently throughout. And if I verify and eventually realize that that meter is off by six hundredths of a volt, for example, in our case, then I can make those corrections all throughout. So the multimeter or any benchtop type of instrument typically trumps a display off of a power supply unless there is something that takes precedent over that. So I've got 4.94 volts. All right, that looks good. We now know how to set our meter up. Now, I'm going to get in some trouble by saying this on this video, but I'm going to do it anyways, because this is an important thing. We need to measure current now. Measuring current is much like unprotected sex. It is a whole lot of fun, but it gets you in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> Welcome to multimeters and a whole lot of trouble. Okay. When I look at voltage, I'm looking across. When I read current, I have to read through that meter. I have to physically break that circuit, and I have to install this meter. Now, I'm going to do it on a display on this whiteboard because this is really cool, and I get to be the instructor and play this on TV. But the bottom line here is I need to break that circuit. I need to take the negative lead, or common, which is the most appropriate term in this circuit, on that meter and hook it to the negative side of the battery. Then I need to take the red lead off of the milliamp scale. So I need to move it over and I need to put it in line. And so the electrons are going to leave this circuit and they're going to flow through and inside of here there's a fuse. And that fuse is going to protect that meter in case we put too much current through it. So it's very key to getting this right. So step one is to measure current. You obviously turn the power supply off. You break the circuit. You install your multimeter. You correctly put your leads to the milliamp or amp range and the common into the correct place. The next part then is to set the dial over to amps so it reads amps. All right? So we're going to do that right now. But I want you now to break the circuit. Any questions?
Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. All right. So you see on your breadboard, you've got where the pigtails come into or are sitting on that proto board, breadboard. Break that red, the negative wire, so we use black in this case, take that black wire off where it comes off our rail. Pull him off and just don't let him touch right there. That's what we're going to do. That red jumper wire is going to touch the, the common lead. Then the red probe is going to touch the actual pigtail of that resistor. That's a good point. That's a good question. All right, let's do it to it. I'm going to give you a quick run around here and we'll see what we got. All right. So we have measured that. All right, I asked, I got 4.94 volts. What did you measure in current? 0.25 milliamps. Okay, great. 0.25 milliamps. Do me an Ohm's law calculation. Just take 5 volts and divide it by your 0.25. What would you get there? Use the Ohm's law. 19.76. Anybody want to buy that for a dollar? 19. 19 ohms. Anybody? Come on, you, you're going to get hung out to dry on this one. What did you do wrong? Oh, I know. I got the court recorder again. I know. All right. Let's go over this. Ohm's law. E is equal to I times R. We want to find my resistance. Resistance is equal to my voltage divided by my current. And if I remember hearing correctly, we had 4.94 volts divided by. Here's the elephant in the room that you need to remember. If I have 4.94 volts, I need to measure in ohms, I need my current in amps. What is 0.25 milliamps in the form of amps? How do we take millis into here? That's right, I gotta move the decimal. Which way do I move it? To the left or to the right? Absolutely, I gotta move three zeros this way. So if I want 0.25 milliamps into amps, because remember I gotta be in the same measurements to make that amps right there, it has gotta be, and I'm gonna walk around, it's gotta be 0.00025. I'm hung out to dry, I don't have a calculator. Who has got something to crush out that number for me? Can somebody get out 4.94 and divide it by 0 0.0025, what'd you get? 19,760 ohms is what you told me, right? So according to this circuit, this resistor has 0.25 milliamps of current flow. According to Ohm's law, the resistance is 19,760. You cannot measure resistance of a resistor in the circuit. You have to physically break it from the circuit. Now I know that either somebody watching on the internet or somebody in here even will say, I know of a tool that exists that I can use to measure resistances in a circuit? And the answer is yes. However, you don't see that very often. In troubleshooting and diagnosing, that's something that we don't see very often. What we do see is we will need to know what the resistance is and we'll have to break the circuit. So let's break the circuit, pull it out, set your meter to read resistance, move that over, and let's read that resistance. So let's do that now. I got to pick on you again because you're the guy, you're the man with the plan that actually did the voltage and current for me. What did you get? 19,928. All right. This is what we used Ohm's law on in the circuit. This is by the Ohm meter, part of that multi-meter aspect. And now let's look at nominal. Nominal means name. So that is the color codes of that resistor. What's the color code that you have on that resistor? Red, brown, orange, gold. Okay, so you got red, brown, orange, gold. Cool. Red, how many? Two. Brown, one. Okay. Orange, it is a 21,000 ohm. However, we don't say that. We say it's a 21K ohm resistor. Now, if it's a 21K ohm resistor, right? What's the gold? Let's get into that first. What does the gold resistance mean? 5%, right. 5% of this bad boy. So that resistor is a 21K ohm resistor because it's a red, brown, orange, and gold. It's got 5% tolerance. So what is the window that this resistor is good or bad at? So I got it right up here. I've got 21,000. All right, what's good or bad about it? Oh boy, we're going to have to do some number crunching, aren't we? All right, what is 5% of that? What do we got? 5%. Well. Here's an easy way to do it, all right? 
10% of 21 is 2.1. Divide that by half, and it's 1.05. So a real quick synopsis here. I'm better with 10s than I am at 5s. That 47 nickel comment from a couple of videos ago doesn't really help me out. 21, 10% of 21 is 2.1. If I divide 2.1 by half, I get 1.05. That's 5%. So what that means is this 21K is plus or minus 1.05K ohms. So, I'm going to need a little bit of help. Somebody take 21 just before I, I make a complete idiot of myself while I'm doing this video. And what do I got? 19,950. So, 19,950, thanks, to 21. That's its nominal value. And it would be 22.05. So, I'm going to rewrite this to be 19.95K. So, what that means here is if you go to the parts bin and you pulled out this 21K ohm resistor, a 5% tolerance would mean that it is good as low as 19,950 or as high as 22,050 ohms of resistance. What was the value that we measured? 19,928, uh-oh, and 19,976. So, is this a good resistor? Boy, it's damn close, isn't it? Would I use this in a circuit? I would. Now, some people will probably bash me and say, no, if it's not within the 5% tolerance, it's bad. But here's the thing. I happen to know that these multimeters are quite a few years old. <clears throat> They've been beat around. And I also know a few things that about meters. When we have an inline multimeter, it's going to add some, albeit small, it will add some net resistance to it. <clears throat> and that will cause some change in the measurements of my circuits. And then finally, I happen to know that these resistors, well, the, I, I happen to know that, that that particular resistor was one that got abused a while back, because that's why we left those out for us to do this experiment with, and it's a little bit older. Uh, I wouldn't use that one in a particular circuit, but I wouldn't feel uncomfortable. What I would really truly answer your questions with, if you were going to ask me this question, is how do I really know? Look. Get a good meter. Get a good meter and get sh make sure it gets calibrated. If you have a great calibrated meter and I read 19760, then I know that component is bad. Unfortunately, we're trying to develop these things and using technologies that we don't have proof positive verification and standardizations on. We've got a meter. Some of you I see you've got uh, I see a good flute back there. I see others of you that have just a no-name brand, which is not bad. But there's a variety in grade and quality. So, what did we do? We used Ohm's Law, applied voltage, measured the voltage and current in that complete path load source. We removed the circuit to measure its resistance. You cannot measure it in the circuit. And then we compared the calibration between what the multimeter said, what the resistance portion of that multimeter said, and then compared it to the nominal value, and we got an answer there. And that's what we've got. So thank you for sitting through this first part. Now we're going to start in on our labs.